My name is Tim McKenna, and I'm principal scientist at NTT Research, and I work in the physics and informatics lab, and within that lab, I'm the lead of the thin film lithium niobate team, and I also work on optical computing. And uh, it's exciting time for thin film lithium niobate. I think um, we've seen a lot of uh, uptake and interest in, from the industry for communication, so for making data center transceivers and for telecommunications applications. And what's really special is that NTT Research, we're working on uh, basically taking the same platform and applying it to computation and applying it to, um, you know, other, other applications that we think are kind of like, not just like a 2x or a 3x improvement, but like 10, 100, 1,000. Lithium Nibate, it's not a new material. It was, you know, it's a man-made material that was invented at Bell Labs around 1965. So it's, it's not a new material, but it has really exciting properties. And what is new is the form factor. And so now we, we have, it, we're able to produce uh, lithium niobate in a form factor that is compatible with integrated photonics. It's a form factor very similar to silicon photonics. And what's really special is now we have a platform that is kind of like on the same um, density or on the same scale as silicon photonics, but it has uh, other properties like a second order nonlinearity, which is really important for making low noise uh, parametric amplifiers. It's really important for nonlinear optic uh, operation, which is in the end, the properties that are most important for computation. And on top of that, it has the electro-optic effect, which is kind of its first, uh, the first killer app of, of uh, thin film lithium niobate is making really efficient uh, electro-optic modulators. And there's work around the world in that. So I think uh, a lot of um, what thin film lithium niobate needs is common to the industry. It's not actually very unique to thin film lithium niobate. There are some specifics about the processing of the material that, that uh, you know, are a little bit different, but I've, I've, you know, worked in silicon photonics, I've worked in thin film lithium niobate. Um, it's, not, um, it's not really a dramatic difference. So I think really what you're going to see is, you know, that the pieces are in place where a lot of the um, debugging and process development has taken place at universities. Now it's, being ta now it's taking place in industry right now. That will all kind of work itself out. And uh, in the end, it's going to be up to the market for the type of volumes and everything that, that's going to drive um, the adoption of this material, but to me it looks very promising. What I'm working on, so um, I'm actually uh, really happy and lucky to work at uh, NTT Research, which is a research company, which means we get to explore things that are five years or ten years away. And so what I, what I was excited to share about uh, at, at this conference is how to use this, this material for doing the actual computation itself in these transformer neural networks. And uh, it's an exciting topic for me. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's an exciting material because we finally have a material that actually has a lot of the pieces, right? It has the nonlinearity, which you can use for matrix multiplication. You can use for nonlinear activation functions. So, and then it has all the benefits of photonics where you can uh, have, um, you know, distributed, uh, it, you know, it, communication. So it's uh, it was a, a really fun talk to give, and I was happy to, to share this direction. The most exciting thing that that uh, can come out of this research is really uh, playing with the boundary between the electronic and the photonic domain, right? Like we have photonics for interconnects right now, and we have electronics basically for everything else. And like, let's see if we can play with that boundary by introducing new technologies where maybe we can break down the the memory bandwidth barrier. Maybe we can have new network topologies that we haven't, haven't thought about and then you know have just systems that that uh, are, are performing you know a thousand times a million times better even so that's kind of like the pie in the sky research perspective but it's I think what what helps me wake up every morning and gives me something to look forward to